todos. Welcome, everybody. Um, hoy estamos acá para celebrar el evento. We are here today to celebrate the event of the day of the CLTs. And we are also going to explore uh, uh, of the tenancy of the land and in Latin America. It's very excited to highlight that today's forum is part of the celebration of the CLT Day worldwide. That in their third year has been a day to create consciousness of the land trusts in all the world. Now, let me give you some information about our organization the International Center for the Community Land Trust, or CLT Land Center, how it's known in English as well, was established in 2018 by leaders and participating in the CLT movement. I'm going to use CLT instead of trust, just to make it shorter. As an organization, we uh, promote and support CLTs that have development and leader community by community in the lands and all over the world. We are inspired through the land trust of the Martin Peña channel in San Juan, who was a pioneer in the CLT to combat the insecurity of tenancy in urban informal areas. Their center recognized the national organization that supported the trust of the of land, the community land trust. With an estimate of 600 CLTs active worldwide, our mission is divided in three aspects. Firstly, is educate about CLTs. Second, connect the global communities. And third, to support innovative projects inside of the CLTs. Today's forum is a conversatorium with, that has three presentations from our my distinguished colleagues. First, Tarsila Fidalgo Ribeiro, who represents the Comunidades Catalizadoras of Brazil and works as the directive of the CLT and is going to talk about the 10 collective tenancy of the land as a mechanism of defense. Secondly, Maria Tor Hernandez Torrales, who is in the, the law department of the University of Puerto Rico and is in the CLT Center, the directive. They're going to talk more about the land trust, community land trust in the region. And lastly, Maria Olga Julia Pacheco, who represents the land trust of the Martin Peña Channel who works as the directive of the CLT Center. We'll do a recap of everything that was talked about and we'll have an open space for questions and answers. So with that, I'm going to pass it to Tassila. Hello everyone, my name is Tassila. As you can see, I'm going to share my screen. Can you see it? No, not yet. You are seeing it, but now not. 
No, now not. Yeah. There it goes. Now you can. Okay. We'll talk a bit from property or tenancy, collective tenancy in Latin America. The idea is to understand collectively what are the principal aspects of the property te collective tenancy in our region. What are the principal formats of the collective we have today still in Latin America? And the role of this initiative to access of housing. I think someone has the microphone. Well, let's see. No, I'm hearing myself. I don't know if you can see who is with the microphone. What is the collective tenancy that we're talking about today here? Well, it is a model that breaks the notion of hegemonic notion of the individual tenancy that is we are seeing in our society, capitalist society today. And in this model, the land is not seen as merchandise. In the model of individual tenancy, we have a perception that our housing that our land is something that we can negotiate, is something that we can change for things, for money. And the collective tenancy changes this notion. Talking about a relationship that's much more personal, a relationship that's more community-based with the territory. We have different ways of land of collective tenancy. This is the ancestral model of Latin America and the civilizations of Inca, Maya, Aztec, the indigenous of the ancestral land communities will follow this model or format of land and collective tenancy. with all of the process of colonization and everything we went through in the last centuries. We had a shift to a model of properties of individual properties and this idea of land and land as merchandise. So we're speaking about practices, living practices that foment another vision of the land and property. And the collective tenancy has a very close relationship with the principles of the community controlling and not creating housing as a merchandise. And this has happened in the last years and in the last decades we had in the regions a very significant moment of gentrification uh, financialization that are stripping away a lot of people from their house. They're stripping away from their territories. It's very important to go back to those models of collective tenancy so we can learn uh, with them and start to think in other ways of really relating with the land and with people. Well, here we have here a map that was made by a, re a Brazilian researcher who identified 
477 experiences of collective tenancy in Latin America today. So we have an image that we only have properties and tenancy models that are individual, but today we almost have 500 experiences of collective tenancy, and that is very important for us. So we ha have clear, a uh, bigger number of experiences in rural areas, but we also have ones that are very important in urban areas. And it's very important to visualize it for these experiences. Now I'm going to talk quickly about three models of collective tenancy of property that we have today in Latin America. We are going to talk about this debate today and have in future reflections of the models that we should have like adapt and start to adapt with the land. The first one is the housing co-ops. You can uh, showing of starting by housing co-ops. It's a union of people that are dedicated to the production and administration of housing of social interest. We have the ex urban experience, with, like the most important of the region. And we have over there a lot of housing co-ops of mutual help. We also have a federation of these co-ops that's called FUCAVAP, uh, Organization of Uruguay of Mutual Help. And these co-ops that started in Uruguay were dispersed through all the region are based on three basic, five basic principles, which are the principles of cooperativism, is autogestion, mutual help, a regimen of construction, where the people that participate start to build, the community control of the housing, of the land, of the territory, and the collective tenancy or property, the goods and the lands and everything like that. As I was saying, it was an experience that started in Uruguay, but it dispersed in the region and it started in Brazil. I am in Brazil right now. And here we had some experiences of co-ops. We also have now a program, a policy of the government, of the federal government that foments that type of model. It was very important and it's still very important in our region. Here, a map of Uruguay with the red points, dots, showing the different experiences of community-based land. It's a lot of in Uruguay and other countries of the region. Another model we have to start to think about our re reality, our relationship with the land, with the territory, with the housing, is the social tenancy or property. We're gonna talk here. It was in the the common lands and communities. They practice historically adopted in Mexico as a result of the revolutionary movement of the country in 1910. We see that the social tenancy of property offers in this country an alternative of the public property or private. It's not public, it's not private. It's social, it's or the people, it's guaranteed the people the right of usufruct of land that they cannot sell it. 
nosotros tenemos uh, también una sesión comunitaria. We also have a community based we have two types of social properties in Mexico. The first time the community lands, the common lands, which are part of uh, farmers, family farmers that use the collective land and their resources. And we have the communities. Uh, es importante decir que hoy tenemos más de la mitad del now we can say that we have more than half of Mexico's land composed by these two types of social tenancy and property, which is the principal way of social tenancy of the tenancy and land we have in Mexico. Here a map shows very well uh, this reality that's very important of Latin America. And we have now the different land trusts that Maria will be talking about more. Maria will be talking about more of this, but uh, we're talking about just briefly about a government that wants to have the governance of it that wants to have affordable housing. And it also has a community development model that it be led by the residents and the main form of doing that is that we have different experiences but the basic one that we have is being able to make a separation with a property that the different plots or land is collective and that the housing or the structures that are living there then that's that those structures are individual properties so this aspect of community land trusts, the, these are definitely being seen in the urban agendas and definitely it's something that has been put in the overall agenda in what's called the Nova Agenda Urbana. And these are initiatives that are being supported by the community land trust, the international community land trust aspects. And we have very clear that there's other ways of collective land tenancy, land ownership. And for example, throughout Latin America, we have the Quilombos where folks who have been enslaved, who have been liberating their land and have established themselves. We also have traditional communities and we know that folks do specific activities in traditional communities. We also have indigenous peoples, towns, and communities where folks live in territories that are very far away from, from the cities, from urban settings. And then we have informal settlements of people that organize themselves in collective ways and as long as they don't have the recognition of, of a property title of the land where they're at they are organized and acting in a community format and we hope that we can talk about this later we have run out of time for now and we can definitely touch base more on any questions that you may have after when we have q a and now i'll pass the mic back Back to Maria, where she can talk about actually the community land trusts. Thank you so much, Tarsila. I'm going to share my screen. I have your screen here, Tarsila. Okay. Gracias, Mil Tarsila, por esa introducción. Thank you so much, Tarsila, for that introduction and for being able to um, guide us on this in introduction. Thank you so much to all of you who are here with us. It's so great to be able to be here in this historic event. It's it's like in the it's the first time that 
for the global south that we're actually sharing in a global international event about community land trust to be able to share information about this type of land collective land tenancy collective land ownership so like uh, one day like today many years ago in puerto rico we needed and looked for information about collective ownership of the land and in the midst of such a period where it was necessary for us to be able to make decisions and we needed to make informed decisions because from those decisions that we would do it would mean our collective ownership or tenancy of many people where their ancestors lived there where they were born there where they grew up there and so in that way we grew up we were feeling the necessity of being able to share that information forward to more communities and other organizations with the hope that they will also find this information helpful so that it can serve them to make decisions so that it meets their needs and their particular needs. So we, we are in the spirit of sharing this information that for us was very useful, not to impose this information, but for those who are listening to this can evaluate and assess so that hopefully in the case that it may be able to assist you and help you something so important that is the, having access to the land. So as making being able to have access to uh, uh, in an affordable way to housing, but it's also a determinant to being able to have access to many other rights. For example, the right to be able to remain and to be able to stay, to be able to ensure land for agriculture to be able to have food sovereignty or being able to have such a resource, for example, a resource such as a water element. And so for us to be able to defend light, to defend earth, defend land is to defend life itself. And so for us is being able to, being able to talk about that today and being able to explain a bit of what community land trust is. And, and we're not talking about and we want to be established is that we're not talking about the land trust that it only benefit one individual or a few individuals uh, just for an estate uh, land trust. We're talking about community land trust without a nonprofit interest and it emerges from the community where it establishes itself. And so this way we characterize them as community land trusts. As Volkswagen was describing, which was one of the creators or folks who we brought in the CLTs in the US in 1972, they described this as it's that this being a land of land ownership that is led by the community, by the people themselves that live in the space in the community. And the representation that we're seeing in this slide is the interrelationship of the three elements that are main and basic to a community land trust. So we have, so these circles and these representation, we borrowed it from, from John Davis, who is one of the peoples that you all know in, in the creation also of the community land trust and its history in the US. And this illustrates that for there to be a community land trust, it, there has to exist a community. That's the first circle. And that that community has to have the desire to work together to be able to satisfy a necessity, whether it's housing, like we have mentioned, whether it be for land for agricultural purposes, for the conservation and the accessibility to water, maybe to rehabilitate or, or conserve the landscape or the land or the different forests to be able to support and save the different trees that can help us mitigate the different climate changes that we're experiencing. And then we have the circle of the land, which is vital in this illustration of land trust, it definitely puts land on the hands of the community to be stewarded where it's not sold because it belongs to everyone and in one way collectively. 
And in this, in this regard, that it is necessary to highlight one characteristic that is very important about community land trust, and it's that, that the, the land is for collective land ownership and tenancy and that it does not, it is not sold and it integrates the, both the property, collective property as the resource of land, as the individual property of the, of what is placed on the land. So imagine the land and the house on top of the land. The land is belongs to everyone in the house and it has a property title of the person that lives on the on the house, in the house. And so one in one participant of the community land trust of is at the same time collective land owner of the land, an individual person who is responsible for the improvements and of the well-being of the structure that is on top of the land. And so that is the right of the superficial of the surface in whatever structure there is. And so whatever it is that that has that connection that has the connection of the land of the collective land and the individual property title of the of the property. We can answer all the questions of this aspect where we have, but right now we only have 20 minutes. So that is the third element in that composition of the circles. And it's the the uh, the responsibility of being able to take care. So this is the fiduciary responsibility. This this right of being able to take care to steward in what we others put on us on uh, um, us putting on ourselves that we are supposed are uh, to take care and to steward that we will not be uh, tricking or manipulating that. We know that there's many people who may want to s satisfy their individual needs. Uh, and we know that what we know that people are committed to satisfying their needs through an aspect of their housing or their basic needs, understanding their collective responsibility. And in this model of governance in the community land trust is that this is integral in the participation and the participation is critical for the people who are part of this community land trust. They are part of the fiduciary board who take responsibility and decisions in what corresponds to this land. So we're not alone on this around the world. And this is what I'm gonna say, uh, what we're doing because Tarsila already showed us, it showed us uh, some maps of, for example, that there's more than 600 land trust around the world, but these are, for example, are some of what you can see of UN Habitat, for example, has recognized of community land trust as an alternative, as Tarsila has said, as we are, for example, we are included in the Nova Ur Urban Agenda, and there's something that looks at, there's an international agency that looks at our, our different community land trusts we have community land trusts, grounded solutions, Canadian network of community land trust, international center for community land trust. And we have our, our, our Fideicomiso de la Tierra Caño Martin, Pe Martin Peña in our organization in, in Brazil, our Termo Territorial Colectivo, which I cannot pronounce as beautiful as you do so in Portuguese, but we have definitely come to land trust as a way that we can actually have access to affordable housing. And so let's think about this and how it's been tested and actually tried and how we have applied it in our own particular region. And we have applied this in Puerto Rico and we have, for example, named it as a community land trust to really work specifically, specifically with housing. That was the first one. The first one that, that the first community land trust in Puerto Rico was the Fideicomiso de la Tierra Caño Martin Peña. And this was instituted for the basic needs. There was many things, but one of the main things is that 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 a uh, project of uh, environmental injustice will end up displacing people or informal communities 
in a privileged home, a place uh, would be displaced from their very from their land so this land trust protects this community for perpetuity to be able to stay there so as long as they're able to stay there they're being able to build and and protect their their land and also the body of water that is a very important body of water for the, that is very important for the city of san juan one of those responsibilities main responsibilities about regular regulation regulating the relationship of the neighbors with the land well it's the relationship of the surface and remember it's like a parliament now i'm going to go more technical it's a real right it is such a valid right as a property a title a property title that we have and so the land the the community land trust provides this right of their surface and their property where they're living there on this collective land owning and that they have the right to be able to utilize the land another aspect that has been established in puerto rico other community land trusts, for example, is Fideicomiso para la Agroecología and also Fideicomiso for the Sustainable Agriculture. And these specifically focus on, on food sovereignty, but also food for also housing, affordable housing, and for also for agricultural workers who do not have land to farm. And so they are provided land to actually do agriculture and also have affordable housing for these agricultural workers so that they can live close to their land and which they work and sow in and farm. And the other land trust that I'm going to mention is the Fideicomiso for Land Development. And this was established in 2017. And it was established with the purpose of being able to provide affordable housing in a urban center that's also established in the city of san juan named rio piedras next to a university and then specifically this community land trust if this specific community of, of rio piedras is being attacked by speculators in this Community Land Trust has the responsibility of being able to ensure affordable housing of low income and moderate incomes who can be able to ensure historic sites for the community in, in historic buildings so that the community itself, they can have affordable housing and tenancies there. So this Community Land Trust is working to be able to rehabilitate these buildings and being able to have access to them and the cultural aspect also. So as all of these land trusts, community land trusts, they have the same north of that we mentioned, the three community, the land, and also the fiduciary trustee board for them to be able to have access to the land. And I also want to be able to highlight this community land trust that is in Honduras. And it's called the Fundación of Eco Verde Sostenible, and it was established in 2004, and it serves communities who are rural in the west of Honduras, and they are a community land trust of land, as they describe themselves, and they acquired land or parcels that they are neighboring water bodies, and they provide water to small communities in the mountainous area, and they ensure that, that these communities have water through this community land trust that they have built. We also highlight Tarsila in respect to the Thermo Territorio Colectivo in that it is important to have in mind the structure, the legal structures that the community land trust have taken and that it depends amongst many of the things that they hope to establish in Martin Caño, Martin Peña, and in Rio Piedras Community Land Trust is that they establish themselves in specific special laws and bills that they specifically um, fall into, that they have specifics to it, that they create the land trust. And there is specific things that are different things that must be abide and all the accountability that must be set. 
the other two community land trusts for agricultural and agroecological purposes, they are for public property titles in the content they write where which are the objectives of the community land trust and it establishes their responsibilities the public public property titles they register in the in the different judicial court systems and they are public property titles and they cannot be removed and they are part of the content and then they are irrevocable and they are part of their constitution and they are part of being able to act as a community land trust they're very well established in the proper in the property title and so it is very important that more recently in 2021 there was established of the urban development sustainable urban development in peru and for our surprise in the our article one in the chapter one in the article one and established in in the 85th article the constitution of community land trust so in peru there's a general law that's specific for community land trust and creating them this law gives the gov the local government the uh, actual intellectual and, con and law and right to be able to constitute the community land trust. This law, not only as it says that we can create the community land trust in Peru, but in the prior article, which is Article 86, it actually indicates that the transfer of public land has some perimeters but that there is a possibility for the creation of community land trust in Peru. Of course, it's not just that. How are they going to function? What format are they going to take on if they are local in the same state? But there's different ways, but there's different ways of constituting a community land trust with the fact that there's a law, that there's a, a public property title. How all this is that going to happen? The important thing is that there's those three elements, the community leading it, the community, the land that is kept in perpetuity, and also the participation that we all of us uh, participate. Now, if you want more reading, for example, or more resources, the International Center for Community Land Trust, we have different literature. There's different cap chapters that they're here. That you, there's also verbal and they they're definitely here they're fi they're financially affordable and they're in spanish in english and you can access them and i'll leave you with this this photo this is a young person from our community land trust of caño martin peña for the purpose of the 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 weight that this slide has is for us to reflect that when we establish a community land trust it is not it's not that we just have a channel for uh, actual action for community action and being able to access, give access to affordable housing for low income community, but also for a dignified home, a dignified life and also for the space. So for this was this photo was taken in the midst of a big protest that we did in Caño Martin Peña in the channel of Martin Peña. but basically saying the land is ours. So this is what we're working with. And thank you so much for being here with us and happy World CLT Day. And so happy World CLT Day, CLT Day happening. And now I pass you to uh, Mariolga for the summary of what we've done today. Thank you. I don't think I can, we can listen to you. Oh, now? No, right now we can. Very good, very good. Thank you, Ben. Nothing. I was saying uh, I wanted to thank Maria and Tarsila for their expositions. 
and Ben for giving us the perspective of that briefing of what the CLT Center is, the International Center for Land Trust, Community Land Trust. And I want to thank everyone that have been connected and have been participating here together with us this afternoon. Before going to the questions or exchanging any comments or anything, I think it's important to review not everything that has been said, but something that has been uh, conducting link in the three presentations that we have seen in this afternoon. What do I mean? Is that throughout the three experiences shared, we've seen the importance of creating, gathering spaces of sharing information. We see how in the channel we have chosen that tool of the CLTs with the exchange of knowledge that is done with the Douglas tree. It's done through the uh, advisors and volunteers. We see how in Brazil, they are, they see what we're doing here in the channel. And this is also can be an option for some of our communities and our people here in Brazil. And we also see from the center you can see identify the necessity after an exchange creation that has been created in 2017 about that creating those spaces to gather and dialogue and where we can see what is being done somewhere else if those are all viable alternatives for our communities our projects and our countries and other on another hand, we've seen the adaptability that has been a key factor and a common factor in the development of the land trust that we have seen, closing with that adaptability that we have had here in Puerto Rico, and we hope that in other places as well. We see that in Honduras, where Maria shared as well, in terms of, in addition to foment and creating conditions for accessible affordable housing for, for vulnerable communities or working class. We're also using this model where we're uh, conservating natural resources and the development of agricultural. In that sense, we can't leave unrecognized the history that Tarsila brought us, that rich history of Latin America based on a common story of colonialism, it doesn't matter the, in, the we are still colonized and we're still are, that have made us develop different strategies and create more just conditions where our people can develop themselves as, society, as a society. And we saw it reflected in the diversity of typologies of 10 years in Latin America. I want to highlight the models of the land community the land trust is a additional tool that our groups have to consider when they are contemplating the collective tenure ownership and reformulating their way of ten of tenure uh, property. And that way we're adding how we are identifying through years of work, the importance of sharing the knowledge because it leads us to share uh, challenges, learnings and opportunities. On another hand, it leaves us to reflect and critical analysis where we can identify the different situations we live in different countries and different communities and the vast majority of times is through bigger things that are going on we just not that we have we don't have the strength to battle it individually but as we create ourselves collectively as a society we do have the strength to be upfront and like for example the selling and when they're when they're selling for high cost our land and on the other hand we can't leave unrecognized the hope that brings being able to share knowledge with other people that are living similar situations. And we have a, 
uh, think of and of aspirations as a society. And lastly, that we are we can create together a, a more just society where we can have a good living can become a reality. In that sense, I want to thank every person that have been here this afternoon, share that for this past year, Catalyst communities have been working, uh, identifying different experiences and projects of community tenure in Latin America and in the Caribbean. Maybe some of you have been contacted by some of our groups that we have also had uh, conversations with key people that have a lot of experience in the topic in our region. And we're in that process of validating the necessities of continuing and creating and fomenting these spaces where we can know each other, hear each other out and help each other out. Without any further ado, we can corroborate if we have any other question in the chat. There's a lot of hello saying from Canada, California, Brazil, Berlin, where the, also celebrating the CLT and we send hugs and kisses from here. We leave an open space for any question or comment from any people that are participating. While we're waiting this, I'm going to share the slide. So you have the information in case after this session, you have any question or comment, consult, you can contact us through Grupo Sur Global at communitylandtrust.net. But yeah. In the chat, someone has any questions or comments? Well, while we're waiting, thinking about that, I would also like to thank the people that are participating since through the Cent International Center for Community Land Trust. Who would be Lydia? I think I saw her here. Greg, Rich, Tassila, obviously. Marioga, obviously. Now I saw that there was or were or was a question of, of Patricia. I'm already open in the microphone. Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you. Maria. 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 I don't know if you don't remember. How do you how are you all? Hello. I was in Puerto Rico in 2017, I think. I knew I learned about the experience of the Martin Peña channel. Here we have some negative experiences of implementing political policies where the community and the common was touched and it was finally managed a very, very violent way and very hard. Well, and now people have their titles individually after a very strong fight. The important thing about this is that that experience where we had a lot of support where international communities and the coalition international of and other organ international organizations, we were able to know different ways of collective tenure. And this, the luck is that we also have a law we have, uh, we impulse that law, that act, and we put in that act a lot of the collective topics like you and other people. And we have an act, even it doesn't say 
community land trust, the act does talk about community tenure as a national organ in the ministry. That is the Ministry of Housing, where the political policies are done, where they have to put ba land banks and also the local government. And there's tools and legal tools that are very important tools that people don't know about that are the ones that can be activated to continue working. And I invited three colleagues, three communities that are in the, they're looking for housing. They're, they're participating and they're happy. We have the experience, we have their, your experience, not ours. They have the law, the act, and they are very motivated to keep working concrete projects where the collective can be a real alternative and the community land. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that comment. I also wanted to add, well, the emphasis that I made to what uh, the community is leading that process with a land that can be taken care of in long term, the land trust takes it away from the market. Because when you put it in the land trust and is that government uh, lead it by the same members of the community, it's really what creates a, a big value of this tool of the community land trust. So then you can share the act so I can add it. Thank you so much for the comment. Hello. My name is Almora. I'm from the sector of the collective of Vallequín. We have a bit of an inconvenience from some years ago, or more than 40 years of the habitat topic. There are some buildings that created in 1945 in Vallequín here in the center of the city. And there are some attacks of displacement from the government. We have been fighting a lot through the years, so we, this doesn't happen. The opening of the central government and looking for a solution because it's more than 700 families. We're talking about almost 1,500 people, the teenagers and young people and, and people with, in, with disabilities and older people. There is a displacement from the government, which is the municipality of Guayaquil. We want to know how you can tell us and with the experience you have and the small experience with the community management and the habitat where we can direct uh, exit to this inconvenience we have in the sector. I was invited by Patricia Sanchez. We have been working with her all of this time in the habitat area and the law than the rights of the community. That and I wanted you to, to give me an orientation and with the tools that you are putting on the table. I think it's to learn more about what's going on. As we said in the presentation, each country is unique. Every country has their own legal framework that you need to look at it. But I can, maybe Maria Olga is taking the information, but I do, can, I can say that one of the strengths from the land trust of Rio Piedras and the Martin Peña channel was the people. The people defended their spaces. And the legal frameworks are important. They're very important because they give us stability and they help us. But that organized communities, united community has to be there 
to do a battle up front to those challenges. They're not just uh, little, they are talking about the local government. And sometimes we feel intimidated when it's the authorities that are being threatening. threatening. What's here, what we're talking about, the expropriation uh, forced and the uh, displacement and the eminent domain. And right now I can't find the word in Spanish, but, but there's always a, a risk that's in the community, a threat. And we need to learn more what's going on over there. And I'm sure that a lot of people here that can give you a lot of suggestion of what's going on. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, of course. Someone like we were mentioning, there is a lot of challenges and in, 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 in its own specific pick, uh, um, particularities, but there may be a lot of challenges that are very common. And like Maria says, the strengths will always be in the community and all of you who are living there and being able to keep that broad mindset of being able to see where you can actually build alliances, whether it be with other groups, whether it be elected representatives from the government, whether it be with universities. So it's a process, it's your own process of your own analysis of your, your identification of your analysis of your identification of challenges and advantages that you have and the different aspects that you can think about and what it means in your own process. We have two questions here. Scott Allison um, asked, for example, that Cuba has systems of public land ownership and they're under pressure from sanctions and possibly at risk in the near future. What new research available and how can CLT principles come to here in that country? So in basically what investigation or what research is it available? Of how we can work with the principles of the CLT in this country. Maria, do we know of any current investigation? In the page of the CLT, I, I, I can't even, the, the, the CLT International Center, there is, there's a lot of research that we have been uploading there. If the person, it's a, public land. Yeah, it's a public land that exists in Cuba. The land there is public of everyone. It belongs to every, well, not everyone, but but it's public. And and it's under pressure of sanctions and possibly at risk. I think we have to um, and understand this question better. Like it's at risk of what? But yeah, Let's go to the web page of the CLT International Center because there's a lot of research. And if you send us a little bit more information to the um, to the email address, we can help you maybe find more specific research or in information on what you're looking for. And I add to this that some of the specific things that the CLT International Center is the visualization of identifying the important themes and issues to carry out investigation and research so that there's different university researchers who come, we can have a series of issues and topics that maybe there isn't enough or any investigation, then folks can actually be able to take those on and do that, like Maria was saying, is. Without, without, so, you know, without any commitment, but you, if you send this information, we can definitely put this on our list, on the list, and, and they can definitely keep it there for future research possibilities. There's also another question by Jesus Jimenez saying, what is the, the benefit, the, the direct beneficial 
benefit of community land trust well jesus it's basically that the 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 support and the power is on the hands of those who live there and the uh basically it's the governance of the community land trust so that you can use external support and uses but it's basically what happens inside in the community and that land in that community it always fall with a lot of weight on those who live those who live in that community i don't know if maria ortasila would like to add anything to it no that's excellent you said it right yeah i think that in 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 terms of uh, to say for those who are present that the site of clt international center is that we have a lot of information and we also have a community land trust site and we also have a uh, thermo territorial colectivo uh, link and you can also see other information and you can see other ways of being able to contact us being able to talk to us being able to talk about specific situations like samuel is saying we're always at the disposition of being able to support everyone and and, and to share with you of everything that we work with As who says uh, the situation, the current actual uh, it is it's important Jesus, to remember that this is not a magical um, solution. There has to be a lot of dialogue, analysis, reflection, and and decision if that the model of the CLT is what best is convenient to the group in your situation where you say that the current property title is private and and, and how it can be uh, transferred into a, a community land trust. And all of this is a sector of indigenous people. I'm sorry if I interrupt you, Olga. What is the country that Jesus is, is saying? It's Ecuador. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the land, the indigenous lands are under so much pressure everywhere. The question about the mercantilization, The, the the word in English is greedy. That um that that greed that more and more profit, more lucrative. Everything's being affected. Everyone's being affected. That we're affecting the Amazonic space. Everything. Everyone like by impacting the Amazonic area, the Amazonian area. Everybody is putting. Yeah. Yes. Yes, the individual property title is much easier to displace people because they have an individual property title because the offering of sale is done to that individual person and the vulnerability of that person being alone, it's much easier to take that away by just offering some money that they think that the person may think that that's a lot, that it's a benefit, a big benefit that they're getting. However, but when the land ownership is collective then this is the part that mariola is 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 saying this is what we have to talk about all of us we have the opportunity to talk amongst all of us and talking and like really talking about it amongst all of our different peoples sharing our brains together and really being able to make that decision but yes let's think we have to really look at the risk of the individual property title properties We're definitely here attentive to any of the questions that you may have. Let's, uh, if people definitely can bring him up or open your microphone, but if you, we were gonna be uh, summarizing and bringing up again that you can definitely contact us like Darcila mentioned and and if you want to reach out to our organizations and we can go ahead and share with you all. This is our information 
and for the last year that we've been identifying different projects of collective land land ownership throughout American uh, Latin America. And one of the intentions for the next year, uh, for our next year is, is CATCOMCA is that identification of and that exchange with some entities or projects of community land ownership in the global south and and we're going to be continuing to continue and do a follow-up on these conversations of our latin american and caribbean um experience and if any of you think that you have any questions or any still any challenges that you may be thinking about don't hesitate to contact us and for you to definitely reach out to the CLT International Center, that is a center where we, many of us, um, come together and that we're all at the best disposition to be able to support uh, whatever that's viable and that's prudent to be able to share with you and that it's possible. So in that, if it's possible to be able to have a dialogue in more deeper ways and in particular ways be able to bounce ideas and be able to share experiences and knowledge uh, amongst all of us. If we don't have any other questions at this moment, I invite Ben to invite us to support us with this activity, thanking everyone to be able to be here and, and also apologizing that of all the interruptions that we had and that were out of our control. And yes, I echo that and uh, definitely our apologies for that. But definitely accompanying this um, apology is being able to say that it's such an it's it's such an honor. I don't know why I'm seeing myself twice. I just want to say thank you so much for taking this time to having the interest for being interested in being able to listen to us how Tarsila was saying, Maria and Maria Olga were here, available, whatever it is that you may need. Please stay in touch with us throughout the chat. I am providing the email, Grupo Sur Global at communitylandtrust.net. And other than that, I'm going to wish an amazing, beautiful, World CLT Day 2024. Please participate, publish, post, do whatever it is that you need to do that we need to be able to see how great this community is, this global community. And I don't have nothing else to say. So thank you so much. And we're, we're, we'll be seeing each other soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.